Bonjour. This book is partly about MOOCs. MOOCs are massive open online courses. EPFL, the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology, decided to create many of them. We have already produced 30, we have 35 in preparation. They are actually recorded in this studio, or MOOC factory. But this book does not tell you the story of EPFL. The book is addressing a more general question. There is a general misunderstanding that MOOCs have to integrate only very simple activities. Because of the scale, because you want to use this activity with 20,000 people, you could only make quizzes or things like that. And then if you take some richer learning activities that have been designed in instructional science, like team conflict, argumentation in the teams, you can actually scale up to scales such as 20,000. But to do that, you need to formalize the idea that is in the pedagogical approach. You have to turn this idea into some kind of algorithm that we call a workflow. It simulates the way uh, different pieces of information cross different uh, activities within a pedagogical scenario. To describe formally this pedagogical scenario, the book proposed the concept of orchestration graph, which describes which activity will be time, which are individual activities, team activities, class-wide activities, and so on. Now, this book is not only about MOOCs. I have been teaching online for 10 years, but before that I have been a school teacher, uh, 31 kids, 9-year-old kids, a school teacher in Brussels. And some people would say there is nothing common with a classroom, with kids running in the classroom, and a MOOC, and I think this is wrong. Of course, a MOOC and a classroom, at the surface level, they are very different. They have different skins. But if you think about the deep structure uh, underneath the surface, this deep pedagogical structure can be abstracted as the same graph. Let's imagine that you teach concepts. So you explore an induction space. Whether it's a book, whether it's a MOOC, you explore an induction space. Whether it's a book or whether it's a MOOC, you explore this generalization space. If you introduce a positive example, you move the learners up the scale of generalization. If you want to move them down, you introduce a negative example. And with the so-called near misses example, you can point a specific feature of the concept. This space, this pedagogical space, is the same if it's online or face-to-face. -face. So, of course, a lesson is not a MOOC. Uh, elementary school is not exactly a MOOC. But underneath the surface, the pedagogical idea can be abstracted with the same graphs. So this book is also applicable to any learning situation, especially any formal education situation. If you browse through the book, you will see there are some mathematical formulas. I am not a mathematician. This is not a book for mathematicians. There, there are very basic elements in this book. My idea was to push the abstraction to a certain level of formalism in such a way that we can see all the same structure is instantiated through very different pedagogical um, situation. Another goal was to build a bridge between education and computer science. For many years, I heard my colleague from computer science saying, well, we cannot do much about education because it's too messy. Oh, yes, education is a complex, messy situation because we treat with human beings. But still, we can formalize them to a point where some apparent hooks appear. And by writing this book, I expect some people from machine learning to see how they could better apply what they have done so far, these very formal models, to the messy world of education. So this book is not presenting a new system or a new technology. It is basically taking an idea, this idea of orchestration and graph, and trying to see if it can resist through all the 42 steps of the pedagogical process, from the design to the analytics at the end. If ever you decide to read it, I would be very happy to get your comments. Merci beaucoup et bonne lecture.